Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Well, Trap here, coming at you with game number six of Group D. The last, final, ultimate game of the round of 16 of the 2004 Ever OSL. Um, if you guys missed it before, basically I did the math and boxers up two to zero and uh, Kingdom is down 0-2, so even if Kingdom wins this game, it will be a case of him being at 1-2 and Boxer being at 2-1, so there's, this is not going to change the result at all, unfortunately. I hope that doesn't make it too much less hype for you, because this is still going to be an amazing game, I think, between two absolute legends. One Possibly uh, more legendary, <laughs> being Boxer, of course, but um, Kingdom is actually also a legend. He, especially back in these days, was a very, very strong Protoss player, as I've discussed before. You know, he is among the best. He's, I mean, he's one of the three Protoss that was able to get into this Star League amongst all of them that were trying in, in a time where Protoss were just getting dominated. So, <clears throat> excuse me, Kingdom. Super strong player. He obviously hasn't uh, gotten the best results, but he's played very well in the last couple uh, uh, games that he's had here, losing to Oversky, losing to Nada. But here he's against Boxer, and um, he's got. We're seeing something a little bit cheeky here. That he's got. He sent a probe all the way around a very strange route, and that could be that he's actually scouting for some sort of hidden or proxy tech, since Boxer is a sneaky. Sneaky Snake and is not unlikely to do something along those lines and so he might have been saying okay Let's check up here first and see just see what's going on and that's ex exactly what it's what's happening is what it looks like Is what it looks like he just went around there to check for weird stuff. He's not going to make any proxies of his own so Anyway, but yeah, um boxer of course a legend a myth a man um, very, very strong player in 2004 as well, you know, one of the people who, you know, he's probably, he's, uh, his biggest days, I think, were the earlier days, maybe 2001, 2, but, um, you know, he's still, I think, I don't think he's really gotten less strong at this point as much as just a lot of other players have gotten strong but he's been able to keep up for the most part but there's just such a large playing field that it's hard been hard for him to win everything like he was earlier on but he's still someone who is who's liable to win this entire tournament you know so we'll uh, we'll see what he can put up here and again this is um, uh, a match that doesn't really matter too much but they're still both gonna give it their all they're still still both gonna play their hearts out here and try to advance uh, will try to win as much as possible you know, momentum is a thing, uh, confidence is a thing, and, uh, you know, these guys are bo probably both just, uh, just consummate sportsmen, e-sportsmen, so they're going to be playing with a sportsman-like conduct and playing their hardest. Um, these guys are both also teammates, by the way, they're both on SK Telecom 1, so they've probably played against each other before, and I doubt that either of them would do anything, you know, uh, to embarrass or do anything funny against their teammate in a, in a match like this so in any case we just have uh, kind of normal stuff going on so that's how I've been just spending all this time introducing the players um, we might see some variation pretty soon we see that boxer has blocked off his front and his back to make sure that kingdom can't get any kind of scouting in actually which is interesting because then he has to play blind and we might see him go for observers in fact just specifically to try to get out some get, I'm sorry get something out to, to get a scout in and now we have this dragoon kind of assaulting this depot at the front door and you know probably tanks are gonna be coming up before too long but we did see uh, uh, a starport going down and I don't think we see siege tech researching so this is interesting so we do have a robo facility <clears throat> after getting the dragoons out and normal dragoon range etc and he's just kind of dancing around taking pot shots of these SUVs as they try and repair things um, and we're seeing a control tower being put down. So, um, are we going to see? I mean, this is, this is a great map for for dropship play because if you can get stuff on the high ground, you know, uh, siege tanks on the high ground behind the nat behind the second base, well, the northern base, I guess, for Kingdom. The second base would be already on the high ground in the back there uh, if he went there. But even if he doesn't take his natural or if he doesn't have defenses up there, 
then you know that could be oh okay oh okay they're, they're showing that he was lifted his barracks off in order to float it out the front so he can spot for siege tanks and but he's re-closing that back door with a supply depot instead so um yeah and there we go observatory down and he's just going to be coming out with observers just just trying to see what's going on because he's completely blind he's seen a tank and he's seen SUVs. He hasn't actually even seen Marines. Um, he actually kept the, those Marines back away from the depot so to, to hide them. And so the Kingdom right now doesn't even have any clue what's going on. He's like, there's no Marines here? Is this some sort of fast tech? And there's an engineering bay. What being created? Okay, he's actually built it over there so he can build some turrets, but he's built it next to Kingdom's base so it can actually be floated in as a scouting unit as well. And that's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to lift it up, float it off. And, but here we go. The dropship is out. He's got a tank and some Marines in it, it looks like. And it looks like we might have him ferry things over at that gap, at that spot. Um, that would be interesting. Of course, the Dragoons are right there, so he can't ferry anything. But now the tanks are sieging up on the other side and forcing him to fall back from this gap. And is he going to try and start ferrying units in here, protecting them with his own siege tanks? Um, it's a little bit dangerous to do so. The SCP drops out and uh, baits that Dragoon in. Dragoon goes to his death. And now he's actually building a bunker? No, he's building a supply depot? Is he going to land that that uh, engineering bay now to create a gap? He is. He's, cre he's landing the engineering bay to, to create a wall. The wall goes down immediately, though, because that an engineering bay did take a lot of damage from the dragoons before and he's actually gonna just gonna cancel that supply depot a cute idea i think the scv and marines are just gonna be left to their deaths <laughs> uh he's gonna try to run up the ramp to get a scout it's not gonna work it's gonna try and run the scv up north to get a scout i'm not sure if it worked we didn't get to see that but um i know there were more dragoons up the direction so it's probably not like oh no oh no boxer loses the dropship the tank as well and was there even a second tank inside that dropship? We don't know. It looks like he was trying to fly it around. Wow, Kingdom putting his Dragoons in the perfect spot, anticipating. There they are right there. You can see on the map they're next to that natural. So he was actually anticipating Boxer's next move, which was to try and go. Okay, I can't break the bottom right side. Let me see if I can go around the top left side and put some tanks in a tricky position there. And uh, instead... Wow, Kingdom is one step ahead of him, and uh, he was one step ahead of him with Dragoons, in fact. The Dragoons stepped in front of him and knocked him down with that plan. And now Boxer is making another engineering bay and uh, is <laughs> is uh, trying to get some turrets up. You know, he needs to get turrets up because he doesn't know exactly what's going on. Uh, in he doesn't know anything about really about what's going on in Kingdom's base. He doesn't know he saw a bunch of dragoons obviously, but he doesn't know if uh, there's reavers and a shuttle coming. He doesn't know if there's a even a, well he could probably assume there's an expansion because he saw I think he saw some probes heading over to the expansion or, or near it. Um, but um, okay now Boxer's at it again. He's got another dropship and more tanks. A pylon is kind of blocking the land route over here, which could be bad for. Uh, him if he wanted to but yeah, boxers is checking out and saying okay well never mind I've been scouted don't need to lose another dropship if I lose another dropship with two tanks of inside it I'm just gone it's just you know too much of a disadvantage um, kingdom now has his own shuttle out so he's gonna be playing some of the uh, elevator games as well uh, the SCV has been left up there and dragoons are gonna pop out and nail it and uh, knock that SCV out. So Boxer continues to not have any information. I don't think he has a commsat station to, with which to scout. And you can see, of course, that uh, the observatory did finish a long time ago. So Kingdom has been able to get observers out on the map. He's very, very aware of what's going on. He's, in fact, trying to chase down that dropship with the tanks inside it, flying over yet another scouting pylon. The vision on the map right now is completely completely bonkers for Kingdom. He's just got such an advantage with map control and map vision. He knows exactly what's going on on the map. He's used uh, his intuition and uh, some of his map knowledge to kill off one drop dropship already, and he's used the vision that he's maintaining on the map in order to stop a second dropship from doing any damage at all. And, um, oh, that observer's gonna die. But, um, yeah, so, uh, this is, a uh, Kingdom is in a good spot here. 
He's in a very good spot. We're seeing his first person view here for just a moment. He's actually got, like, we can see observers around the map. He doesn't have any, too much vision in the middle of the map, but he's got vision on all the choke points leading around different parts of the map. And did he see these dropships, actually? He's going to in a second. Oh, no! Boxer has to turn around if he loses another... Oh! Oh, if those Dragoons had been a little bit more on top... Well, if Kingdom had been able to... If he'd been like looking at that spot exactly and been able to move the dragoons over to take a couple more shots at those those dropships, he might have lost one. Instead, he's coming in here to cover with the uh, vultures in order to sneak by the dropships at the top. Very dangerous given the fact that one of those dropships is almost dead. If he can see the high ground, he can pick off the tank. He doesn't have quite vision of the high ground there. <coughs> the shuttle coming in to assist was just a moment too late. Now he's going to drop four tanks out in addition to all those vultures. Tanks are going to siege up on the high ground and it's going to force those Dragoons back. This brand new shiny Nexus is going to go down. It's like uh, I had a, I got a car once and it wasn't a new car, but one time I, I got a car and the very first day that I got it, it got uh, hit and run. I woke up the next morning and, uh, and it had a dent on the side because someone had hit it while it was parked and run away. So it's like that Nexus is just, just warped in. Brand new Nexus already being hit by siege tanks. Um, luckily, the car that I had was not totaled like that Nexus was. The Nexus goes down completely, gets pelted away by the tanks, and is destroyed. And we might even see Kingdom take the inner base at the sort of uh, 10 o'clock position. Uh, theoretically, it would be maybe an easier thing to deal with than this high ground. Of course, he has a shuttle as well. So you can try and deal with this stuff um, in some other fashion. But if he, if he drops out a Zealot, for example, it's just going to get immediately killed by the Vultures. He's got a lot of Vultures up there. So uh, this is not a good situation for Kingdom. He actually is losing it. Oh, he's actually choosing to run Dragoons all the way around in order to combat this. And he's probably going to drop Vultures. I'm sorry, drop Zealots and then run in with the Dragoons at the same time to try and kill off this tank count. He's actually going to run in Dragoons from the, from the south as well. And this is, oh, he's going to drop Dragoons out, actually. Dropping Dragoons on top. And there's the Zealot. Here comes the Dragoons running in. The Zealot is on top of the tanks. And if he could just take out the Vultures, at least, then he'll be in good shape. And he actually does kill off a lot. The tank's doing a lot of damage. <laughs> it's just, like, the absolute worst spot to have to run in on foot to attack. And, uh, but he had no other choice. He needed to save his gas. He needed to try to get Boxer out of the back area of his base because otherwise Boxer would just continue to be a nuisance. So he's kind of forced to waste, uh, to not have the best situation running in on these tanks from north and south. And, um, uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. Ooh, he does, okay, the observer is overhead. It looked like there was an observer there for a second and he was going to take some major damage by those mines. But he does, a, uh, does avoid it. Uh, but in any case, so things are evening out now. And of course, uh, we saw on the map that, we saw on your screen that Kingdom retook that, uh, I guess, 10 o'clock outside position uh, very, very quickly. As soon as Boxer moves his tanks away from the dead Nexus, he went and rebuilt another one on top of the same spot. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, Kingdom, things looking good for Kingdom. Things looking pretty good for Kingdom. Boxer has his third up as well, I think, though. So, uh, you know, that would be not necessarily the best situation. But Kingdom has managed to clear out anything. He, I mean, he lost the Nexus, but that's actually not too huge of a deal. He only lost maybe four or five Dragoons to some of the Vulture harassment and then those tanks up there, uh, a couple Zealots as well. So he hasn't taken too many losses. Um, so you can see his, his uh, army is still in pretty good shape. Two shuttles out now. Two shuttles out now for Kingdom. That's very interesting. Um, and if those are all loaded up with Zealots, um, then that can be very, very effective against a sieged up Terran player. If you can drop a bunch of Zealot bombs down on top of the tank. Um, is he going to go for an attack instead, though, and run those shuttles around the map and actually just drop in Boxer's main or something like that? That could be effective as well. It's, I'm really trying to figure out if Boxer has that third base down at the bottom right area or not. It's kind of hard to tell in the mini map. They haven't really showed it when I've been looking at it. Um, but Boxer is trying to move across the top of the map, and he's going to say, instead of trying to do something sneaky and put dropships on the high ground, I'm just going to go around with my entire army and just take control of this entire high ground. 
Lots of forces up here. Tons of tanks. The shuttles are coming in. He sieges up right underneath the shuttles. Maybe not the best move, but he needed to siege up because the Dragoons were oncoming as well. He needs to get the siege mode down before the Dragoons. The Dragoons are trying to squeeze up a tiny ramp and go through a tiny choke. This is the worst spot for the Protoss to attack. Absolute worst spot. The tanks are surrounded by vultures. They're putting out spider mines to delay as well. So this is not a good situation at all. Boxer is really, really just abusing the nature of this map for, to his advantage right now. Um, and he's unseizing. He's going to try and move a little bit further down along. But again, this, he's going to get himself kind of choked up a little bit as well. It's going to mean it's going to be harder, actually, for vultures to protect those tanks because you can you want your te your vultures to be able to clump up on the enemy zealots. And he's actually lost a lot as well. The Dragoons did do significant damage to the zealot to the vulture count. Here he comes in. He's actually dropping a ton of units on the top, attacking from the bottom as well, um, trying to micro a little bit with the shuttles. And now he's going to try and run in on the high ground. This is exactly the worst spot. He's going through a tiny choke, and he's actually stopped moving. Now he's trying to push in here. He is going to get within range of the tanks. The vultures were on, not on the spot. If the vultures had been farther north, they would have been able to block that entirely. <clears throat> they would have been able to block that entirely. Um, uh... Sorry, they would have been able to entirely block the vultures from getting down south. Sorry, my computer just made a funny noise, and you guys probably heard it too in the recording. I apologize for that, but it distracted me for a second there. Um, but yeah, uh, he if the vultures had been up there, he wouldn't, wouldn't have been able to get to those tanks and kill them off, essentially. And those tanks would have been able to do a lot more damage because that was the really, really bad spot to attack in with those Dragoons. He basically got lucky that the vultures were not in the best position. I guess if they weren't in the best position, he could have used shuttles and moved them on top as well. Um, so that could have happened as well, but that would not have been quite as effective as what he did, which is just walk up and shoot the tanks and kill them. So, uh, in any case, moving on, we now have four bases for Kingdom. Um, Boxer must have that bottom right base. I'm sure of it. He, there's no way he wouldn't be. We would be that far behind, even though. Uh, I don't think I've seen it, but uh, we're having some skirmishes in the middle here. Now, if Boxer can take control of this side of the map, it will be very, very huge. He'll be able to keep Kingdom from getting that fifth base, um, but it looks like the Vultures are just going in and harassing. He's not actually trying to take control of that spot. Oh, no. Uh, I'm sorry, that fourth base. Fourth base is what Kingdom already has. And if Boxer can restrict access to that fourth base and threaten it, then that will be huge, but it looks like Boxer is just setting up on his own side. This is... So on this map, there's a lot of bridges, a lot of choke points, and of course, if you're a Terran player and you can siege up on one side of a bridge or a choke point, you can, it's, it's almost impossible to break it, right? Because your tanks just do so much focus fire on things that are going through a small funnel, and it's just too, too powerful. And um, so, um, Boxer is just utilizing that again. He's camping out on his side of this bridge, and I think what we're going to see him do is just is just secure control of this side in order to get more of an advantage by getting um well never mind boxer's going for an attack as well he's actually going to move around the north side of the map he's leaving some units in that uh i guess fourth base of his next to those bridges um and now he's actually moving a large force around the north as well now is he actually just going to kind of con you know constrict down around and uh attack from multiple sides or is he actually going to go for an attack not, not attack, but contained for multiple sides. Or is he actually going to go for an attack? And Kingdom uh, kind of toying with the idea of crossing that bridge, saying, okay, well, if your army is to the north, I'm going to go attack you to the south. But there's uh, just enough tanks, just enough tanks left there and some spider mines and vultures to protect them. That it's just, and we just saw the power of that, that that was only half, maybe two-fifths of Boxer's army in that location. But because of the choke point of those bridges, it was just too powerful. Terran is too powerful in those situations, and um, Kingdom was not able to cross it. So, Boxer is moving around the top of the map again with a significant force. There's a Dragoon already in play, and now he's revealing the carriers to attack. We saw them earlier. I was too distracted talking about Boxer's positioning to, to, to mention it, but we saw the carriers on screen, and you knew they were coming. And now the carrier has free reign over the tanks. He's just going to go away killing them. And I think Boxer's is like, all right, well, this army is dead, but I'm going to do what damage I can at least with these tanks because running them away will not work. Uh, so I might as well just do some attacking. And they are going to... He's actually trying to target down the Nexus... 
The Nexus is actually at very low hit points at this point. Jagoons are going to come around the north and try and clean up the Vultures as well, but the Carriers have it covered. Uh, he doesn't even really need to risk these Dragoons to, to take care of this. Dragoons are, um, they, you know, doesn't want to lose those. But now there's four Carriers out now, I believe. Significant amount of Carriers. Now, as good as tanks are in this map with the choke points, with the bridges, etc., Carriers are just as good on this map. There's so many ridges. There's so many uh, bits of high ground. There's so many uh, valleys uh, that that the carriers just always have some terrain to fall back to, basically, to escape. And we're seeing Boxer is just now, this has caught him off guard. He's just now starting to make Goliaths. Um, normally, if you scout the carrier's uh, tech, you know, you want to start getting Goliaths ahead of time. So you're prepared for them already. And Boxer has been caught off guard a little bit. He's just now making Goliaths. And so with four carriers out now, He's not going to have enough Goliaths to deal with these carriers. This could be really bad for Boxer, actually. Kingdom is moving out, and he's going to try and go for an attack. He's got his entire ground army to support as well. Now, there are turrets up, at least. He's built... I don't know if he's built those turrets just recently or not. But Boxer has moved into a defensive position in this south uh, area as well, which would secure him a fifth base. I don't know if he has a command center there yet, but um, Boxer is just playing this positionally just extremely well. And finally, those vultures get cleaned up down at the bottom left. There was a lot of them there, and he didn't really want to devote his entire army to just clear out vultures. So instead, he ran the probes away uh, and then just dealt with it with some some ground units. But but now the carriers are going off on their own, uh, just killing off some mines. Not necessarily the best use of those carriers' time uh, when he could be going into Boxer's main, <coughs> excuse me, going someplace else and uh, doing significant damage. But he does have to be careful, though. Right? He has to be careful because if he, if he does get those carriers caught in a position where Goliath can just attack them, then he's going to lose a lot of money. There's so much money invested in these carriers. He's going... To, oh! Is he going to go for the armory? He is going for the armories! Uh, that one carrier is standing within turret fire. He needs to be careful about that. And I can actually maybe even kill that turret off. But he says, no! I'm going to just ignore the turret. I'm going to kill off these armories. No more Goliaths for you for the time being. He does kill the turret on the way out, actually. So that is a significant carrier count now. And the Boxer cannot make Goliaths for a time. Uh, and here we actually have... Um, they're trying to split the map. Kingdom is trying to take that north part of the map in trade for the south part of the map that Boxer took. But Boxer is moving into that location himself to try and take it over. The tanks are sieged up. There's not a lot of zealots left, but the carriers might be enough. They don't think there's quite enough Goliaths to deal with the carriers. In fact, he, the Dragoons could take care of the Goliaths. He's actually... Target firing down the carriers, and one of the carriers, I think, is... I didn't get to see it, but I think one of the carriers died, but all the Goliaths die, and now it's just six carriers against nothing. He's actually lost a lot of Dragoons there, um, kind of needlessly. I don't think he needed to to attack with the, with the Dragoons because they were just dying to the tanks. Um, and uh, I guess they weren't really attacking the Goliaths very much. That's the thing, is if you can get Dragoons to attack Goliaths, kill off the Goliaths, then you can go in with the carriers, carriers deal with the tanks, or vice versa. That's the optimal thing. Instead, it was just kind of all versus all. The Goliaths were focusing on the carriers, so that was good micro on Boxer's part to make sure that he was focusing on that. Um, but it just wasn't enough. Boxer did not have enough Goliaths. And of course, without armories, you can't make more Goliaths, so he's stuck without a Goliath supply right now. I'm sure he's just finishing some armories right now, but... Uh, he's he's needs to be constantly producing Goliaths to take care of these. Instead, he's counterattacking counter actually this uh, this fourth base, which is a bold move, and he's probably going to lose these tanks. But if he can kill off the Nexus, it'll buy him some time. And he's actually just I mean he's drawing those carriers away. Look at all the carnage. Look at the little piles of rubble of all these destroyed buildings. Boxer is probably supply blocked right now um, by losing several supply depots. He lost his armories as well, of course. Maybe he's not supply blocked because he also just lost a ton of units. So there is that. But um, Boxer says, all right, well, I mean, this is classic StarCraft tactic. If you cannot actually deal with what is coming your way, counterattack them, make them draw their whole army back home, and uh, and buy yourself some time, right? So that's kind of the idea there. We saw that Nexus that was attacked earlier is still at low hit points, of course. Um, but these carriers are actually just going right in. Just ignoring these turrets, just gonna power them down. I think there's like 10 carriers now. That is a ridiculous carrier count. Um, <laughs> honestly, I think the only way, and this is something Boxer would do too, but I don't think the only way he's gonna deal with this is with some kind of cloaked wraith shenanigans. Um, if he was able to get some a squad of cloaked wraiths, comm scan, kill the observer, 
and then kill off the uh, carriers that way. Um, that might be a way back in his... And he actually killed off... Before he lost those tanks, he did kill off that Nexus. He's scanning. He sees the Nexus is low health. Is he going to try and target fire down the Nexus with these vultures? He's actually... With the, what are these vultures doing? There's still vultures in Kingdom's main? I guess Kingdom's having a hard time dealing with all this harassment. He's going to lose these Dragoons to mines. Okay, it looks like they do actually manage to barely survive there. Um, but he is... Okay, so he's going to clear out those vultures. But the vultures are actually almost killing a gateway. Um, they were planting mines outside of the gateways, and obviously, you know, you don't want your units to pop out into mine fire. But, um, anyway, uh, yeah, Boxer No has been focusing entirely on Goliath, so he does actually have a significant Goliath count. I don't know if it's enough. I still stand by the fact that I think, you know, Cloak Wraiths as a Hail Mary would be the way to get back into this, because even that many Goliaths, the thing is, is he has a ton of Goliaths, but he has how many tanks? Three? I'm seeing three tanks. Dragoons are going to stomp all over these Goliaths with only three tanks to back them up. Especially because he actually he can go, actually go in with those carriers and pick off the tanks. Look, he's picked off one of the... No, I'm sorry. He did, maybe he did, I think he did pick off one of the tanks. And now the Dragoons are coming in as well, firing away at those Goliaths. The, Goli the carriers can just kind of stand back and uh, stand behind the Dragoons, essentially. Use the Dragoons as a wall because if the Goliaths target fire the carriers... And now he's going to... Yeah, the, the, in a strange twist... The Goliaths actually were targeting down the... I'm sorry, the carriers were targeting down the Goliaths, and the Dragoons were left to deal with the tanks, but because there was only three tanks, it didn't even matter. So, um, he's actually able to go in and just, uh, you know, take take out all of the tanks, basically, with the Dragoons, and now the Dragoons have free reign to run around. The carriers are having to microwave a little bit here, but this is the power of this map. Carriers on this map, look, you can just fall back to this lake, this little, nice little blue, blue water lake, and uh, just take some scenery in, you know, have everyone in the carrier look out the window and uh, look at the beautiful scenery. And now this is hit for Boxer, I think. Now we have uh, Kingdom in his base with these carriers. Now here's the thing, though. He doesn't actually have a lot of Goliaths. He's just been producing so many carriers. I'm sorry, he doesn't have many Dragoons. He's going to get pushed back here. And he's, we lost a lot of Dragoons because they were, they were dying to mines coming out of the gateways, etc. And so... Um, maybe he doesn't actually have the June count to never mind. Okay, here's some reinforcements coming in. So he will be able to deal with this after all. The Goliaths are gonna be forced to fall back, and the Goliaths are actually stuck. Oh no, he might we might see GG right after he loses this Goliath force actually, because they're stuck between the carriers and the dragoons. There's not enough Goliaths to actually effectively deal with the carriers. So the carriers can almost just a attack move. Of course he is microing very well against those Goliaths as they try and target things down. Um He's actually getting one very low. Looks like about 100 hit points left on that carrier. But no carrier losses. Dragoons are now going over uh, over the ramps. I'm sorry, over the bridges into this extra expansion area. And uh, there's a few turrets here and a couple Goliaths, and that's it. But the Dragoons are pouring over the bridges into this expansion. And now nothing is left to defend this expansion. He's going to lose this. Um, Boxer setting up a secondary line. Uh, at his uh, at that choke point, but after he kills this he could just go south and kill the the six o'clock expansion as well There's a bunch of turrets there, but there's nothing else and so Dragoons or zealots or whatever can just run down there and kill it off and it looks like he's kind of pushing out trying to Toy with the idea of going after those carriers, but he's forced to fall back again to that choke point and the carriers Oh, he does actually get one carrier, but it doesn't I don't think it matters at this point There's just so much power in the air right now. I think there's almost a dozen carriers. or, or um, I mean, now there's probably 11. I'm, I imagine he probably made a dozen and he just lost one. He may be making more. But I think with the amount of Goliaths that are in play and the low tank count, he's actually okay. Never mind. He's making more carriers. I was going to say, he might just be focusing on Dragoons at this point because, you know, Dragoons are, are going to be... Uh, are, I mean, he has enough carriers. Once you have so many carriers that you can just pop buildings in like two seconds or less, it doesn't really matter how many, you know, one dozen or two dozen carriers... It's not a huge... Well, I mean, that's a huge difference, actually. But, I mean, like, a dozen carriers versus 14 carriers or 15 carriers is not a huge difference uh, in your in your attack power. What is a huge difference is having enough Dragoons to protect those carriers. And this might be the final nail in the coffin, though. Kingdom pushing in here into the uh, kind of natural expansion, the, bot the, the nearby expansion to his main with these carriers. And uh, there's Dragoons firing on Goliaths. Goliaths desperately trying to fight off the carriers, but the... <laughs> They can't fight both at once. 
Those go he's actually macroing very well, and Boxer's Goliaths may have been able to deal with either the Goliath, either the carriers or the dragoons. I don't know why I keep switching dragoons and Goliaths in my in my mouth when I'm saying them today a lot, but um, but he's just not able to deal with both, and so. Um, you know, when he's target firing down the carriers, the Dragoons are rampaging. When he's uh, battling with the Dragoons, the carriers are doing their damage. And um, we're seeing Blight of Way plus two plasma shields. That's kind of interesting that he... I mean, the plasma shield upgrade obviously applies to both air units and ground units, so it's kind of effective in this case. But uh, anyway, yeah, so maybe there's less carriers than, than I expected, actually. What, am, I, am I missing something? I'm only seeing a few carriers now. Did he kill some carriers? I'm really confused. I'm 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 legit confused right now. Does he been killing carriers and I've just been missing it? Because that I thought there was like a clump there and that and I was like, oh, there's a bunch of carriers there. Uh, but maybe he lost some carriers and I just didn't notice it. But anyway, this is gonna be GG. Once you get your units on top of their production facilities, killing stuff as it pops out, then there's nothing left to do. So there's the GG coming from Boxer. A little bit of a smirk on his face. Kingdom is going to take the game. And uh, again, you know, uh, there he is right there. It's it's kind of about pride in this case. So, you know, you can kind of just say, all right, well, um, you know, good for him that he was actually able to take a game in this. He's not going to go 0-3 and just lose out entirely. Um, he's able to get a win. Uh, just a really nice win, too. Just just very, very well played. Basically, you know, even though Boxer was just really abusing this map and the advantages that it has for Terran, um, Kingdom was able to counter it every time, and he was able to, in some cases, just kind of be one step ahead of him and know what was going to happen and be able to take care of uh, take care of the threats before they even were threats. So, um, very well done by Kingdom. He's going to take that game. But again, this is the last game of Group D, and uh, just to summarize... Um, you know, we did have Nada and Boxer advancing. They both have 2-1 scores. But because in their game in this group, Boxer beat Nada, I, I, what I think happens is I think Boxer advances as the first place player in this group. He's going to be advancing into the first place or the, the, the better seed in the round of eight. And Nada will be advancing as the second person in the group. And he'll get the not as good seed because he'll be going up against the number one seed from another group. So, um, yeah, that's going to do it for the round of 16. We made it. We made it through the entire round of 16. Let's see. There is six times four games uh, is a one, two, three, four, a bunch. And uh, plus there was the tiebreakers. 30. I think there was almost 30 games. Let's see. Because there was there was six tiebreakers in one group. So that's 30 actually. And then there was three tiebreakers in another group, I think. Um, no, and then there was eight tiebreakers in the other group. Jesus. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I'd have to go back and count. But I believe off the top of my head, I believe that means that there were 38 games in this round of 16. Wow. 38 games. We made it. We made it. It took, uh, it took a month and uh, a month and a half to get through the round of 16 because I remember starting at the beginning of September and I was like, oh, I'll finish the round of 16 before September's over, right? And of course, I did have some work stuff that took me away from the round of 16 for you know a week, week and a half. So apologies for that. But that's going to do it for the round of 16. We're going to be doing it in the round of eight. And I'm not going to talk about that too much right now because I'm actually planning on making a whole video to summarize the round of 16, who advanced, and give a preview of the round of eight. So we'll kind of stop, take stock of the tournament moving forward, look at the bracket, who's going to be lined up against whom, what the matchups are like, and uh, do a whole in-depth analysis of that before we... Um, before we get into the round of eight, but I'm excited. Uh, obviously, so many cool players have gotten into the round of eight. So many cool players have even been eliminated already, actually, from the round of 16. It's just such a stacked tournament. I'm hyped about the round of eight. It's going to be cool. Um, so that's going to do it for the round of 16. Um, look out for that other video soon and some other commentaries. Thank you very much for watching. GG.